Well, the attack claiming 12 uh, lives, including four children, amongst them the 14-year-old twins uh, seen here, Yulia and Anna Askinchenko, and uh, another 56 people being injured in that strike targeting a pizza restaurant. Well, let's speak to journalist Colin Freeman, because uh, Colin had literally just left the restaurant when that missile struck, or two missiles struck. Colin, thank you very much for speaking us, uh, to us here on GB News. Just talk us through your experience. Yeah, by rights, we should have actually been in there. Um, we arrived at the restaurant about 7 o'clock, and then at about two minutes past, we got a phone call from somebody that we'd been trying to get hold of all day. Uh, he said that he was available for the next hour on the other side of town. So we put down our menus and left. And then while we were uh, meeting him on the other side of town, about half past 7, 28 minutes or so later, we heard this thunderous explosion. Someone said that's come from the general area that you've just be come from. Um, so we drove back to have a look, and sure enough, um, the restaurant where we'd been eating, um, uh, or about to eat rather, um, mm. was hit by this missile. And we were looking at this sea of rubble from where they were pulling out bodies and people who, were, who had been injured, and thinking, yep, yeah, that, that could have been us in there. So that, yeah. that phone call saved your life, effectively? Uh, certainly, probably saved us from uh, either being killed or possibly fairly badly injured, yeah. And that, that restaurant, then, um, is very popular with, with journalists, members of the media. You know, is, it, could that partly have been why it was targeted? I don't think... Not so much because it was um, used by journalists, I don't think, but it, it's... It, Kramatorsk, where this restaurant is, is a, a frontline town. A lot of the other places have shut, and this is one of the few few places that's still open. It's actually a very nice bar restaurant, kind of place that you might find anywhere in the UK or Europe. Um, so it's very popular. Um, there's been a lot of talk of the fact that it may have been targeted because um, soldiers in there. Soldiers do use it, but you find soldiers in practically every um, restaurant, cafe and everywhere else in Ukraine. Uh, this is a war where civilians are mobilised as soldiers, so you get them everywhere in the civilian world. They're not just confined to barracks. But we've got this extraordinary development now of the uh, Ukrainian intelligence agency, the SBU, um, arresting this man um, who's a local gas transportation uh, operator uh, and, and basically being uh, accused of treason. They believe that he may well help these missiles to target the restaurant. Yes, I mean, it, it surprises me a bit in a way because this place is well known. I, I could show you where it was on Google Maps now and give you a precise location for it. So what exactly he was doing, why the Russians needed um, uh, any local help with it, if indeed they... Um, uh, if, if indeed they, he was helping them, um, is, is, is a mystery to me. But um, that is what the Ukrainian intelligence services are saying, that they have arrested this mm. guy. Slovyansk uh, is known as a place where, you know, there are some pro-Russian sympathisers here, so it's certainly not beyond the bounds of possibility. And it's also being suggested that the, the Wagner Group is now setting up base near Minsk in Belarus. Uh, yes, I don't know much more about that um, at, at the moment. It's clearly a very fast-moving story. People here are, uh, are watching it very closely, though. Ukrainians, ever since the coup have been, uh, you know, the coup attempt in Russia, have been following on their mobiles. Um, it, it, it clearly, there is uh, n no one's too upset at the fact that Russia's got its own internal feuding problems at the moment, and uh, um, it's been gripping a lot of people. You know, like a Netflix drama. Netflix has nothing on this. Watching your your enemies fighting amongst themselves and uh, generally. You know, um, uh, potentially uh, reaching a situation where, where they're f that they may end up having to abandon yeah. their invasion of Ukraine for that reason. But um, uh, it, that's still very much an unfolding situation, obviously. Yeah, you're back in Kramatorsk. I know you've been trying to find out what's going on elsewhere in Ukraine as part of your, your uh, reporting. But give us an idea about the reaction there, bearing in mind you have four children amongst the casualties and these, these two 14-year-old twins. It's, it must have really hit the, the population hard. Uh, it has, although I'm afraid to say that this kind of thing is all too common uh, here. Mm. Um, back in, I think it was April of last year, Kramatorsk um, had yeah, a missile yeah. attack. 
that hit a um, station, the main railway station here, where 60 people died. There's been several similar attacks that have hit civilians in this city since. And, of course, there are countless attacks like this all over Ukraine all the time. So while there is outrage, there is also resignation that this is just yet another grim day um, uh, of... of for Ukraine um, in, in this long saga of the Russian invasion. So in, in light of this, I mean, how, how safe do you feel? Are you taking extra precautions or are you only sort of putting on your flak jacket and helmet when you're, when you're right by the front line? Well, I'm no different to the, the people who live here, really. You, generally speaking, the, the, the front lines are where the, the primary danger is these days. Russian missile attacks do happen, as we all know, every, every so often. Um, a lot of those missiles are shot down. Ukraine's a big country. It's several times the size of the UK. There's a population of 40 million people here. Most people are kind of resigned to the fact that, um, you know, if a missile strikes, there's not much you can do about it. It's a bit like just hoping that you don't get hit by lightning, really. Um, otherwise, you'd be hiding in a bunker, you, you know, all the time. Yeah. Um, but obviously, as last night, uh, two nights ago demonstrated, um, you, 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 you do end up relaxing a bit about that sort of thing, and then it can suddenly just yeah, like um, that. Yeah. We were talking to, to a Ukrainian MP yesterday, and she said it's a case of you go to bed, you don't know if you're going to wake up. No, a lot of people have WhatsApp groups here where they check in uh, each morning just to sort of say, are you OK? Is everyone all right? Especially if they're living in a town where th there are missile attacks occasionally, which, uh, which is... Kramatorsk is one of those towns. So, yeah, imagine that you've got a WhatsApp group um, rather than checking in just with family and friends and perhaps swapping pleasantries for the day or fun videos that you saw last night. You're checking in and saying, um, yeah, everybody OK? Did you hear that explosion over on the other side of town? Um, are you all right? Can we, you know, can you confirm that you're OK? I remember interviewing somebody last year who had, had, was a member of one such WhatsApp group and he, he remembers his, his friend checking in at one point after hearing one explosion, then there was another explosion 10 minutes later, and he didn't hear from his friend again. And I met that guy oh, um, outside a, a, a burning housing block, and sure enough, his, his pal was in there somewhere, didn't make it out. 